Hello guys, this is What About Nintendo, and today I'm here for another video. In this video, I'm going to be going over five reasons why I'm hyped for Starlink Battle for Atlas on the Nintendo Switch. Got a lot of points to go over, so let's get right on into it. So if you don't know what Starlink Battle for Atlas is, it's kind of a open world game where you fly around in these, uh, you know, space jet things and you shoot monsters and you, you fly around. There's a story. I'm not really sure what it's all about. I've seen a few cutscenes, uh, but I don't really know what the overarching story is. But it's kind of like, if you know No Man's Sky, it's kind of like that, but like not bad like it has an overarching story the, the world's a lot smaller more concentrated so it's, it's it's like that no man's sky kind of thing but on a smaller scale uh and it's coming to the nintendo switch it's also coming to the ps4 xbox one pc uh but the switch version is special because the switch version has these exclusive star fox missions which is number one reason why i'm hyped for starlink is that there are Star Fox missions. So obviously, I'm not even gonna lie, the biggest reason why I'm hyped for this game are these Star Fox missions. Yes, the game looks cool, and I'll get into other points about why I think the game looks pretty interesting in, you know, my other four points, but the biggest reason is Star Fox. Star Fox is a series I've grown up with since Star Fox 64. It is absolutely fantastic. This is like a perfect game and the way they implement this is very nice it's not just like oh yeah you can play Star Fox whatever no they're exclusive Star Fox missions he's integrated into the actual story of the game uh, all their voice actors are back they have new voice lines they actually do things in the story that aren't in the other versions uh, and they they you can fly around in the R wing and it's great it's awesome it looks really cool uh, so it's not just like, oh, you play as the Star Fox skin. No, it's like there's actually, like, the Star Fox crew is actually here impacting the story, which I think is just super, super cool. And I saw Star Fox and I was like, yup, gotta get this game, looks so good. Because, dude, I'm, I'm just a, a sucker for everything Star Fox. I even bought Star Fox Zero and it wasn't even good. The ratings were terrible and I bought it anyways. <laughs> so I was just like, it's Star Fox, gotta try it out. Um, it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't that good either. But yeah, this looks like, man, I, I can almost imagine this being the next Star Fox. Like this is, I can almost imagine this being where Star Fox goes in the future, which is really cool. But second point is, as I said earlier, it's kind of like a more concentrated, uh, more thought out No Man's Sky. When No Man's Sky was announced and they showed everything off and they talked about like space travel and just finding these planets with all these different creatures and you can mine and fly and fight and I was just like, oh, dude, this is awesome. And then No Man's Sky actually came out and I was like, oh, there's no reason for anything you're doing. The world is way too big, way too disjointed. It's actually not all that interesting. There's not really like everything's too spread out obviously if you have this like almost infinite universe you can't feel everything with interesting things to do you're just gonna get to a point where you're just like yep yeah, that's, that's pretty much the same thing just found it's like not that different but the concept of no man's sky was really good i feel like the scope was just way too big this kind of has that same no man's sky you you fly from planet to planet there's a big uh you know universe that you can explore this big galaxy what, What's the word? Solar system that you can explore. There's tons of different planets. You go smooth from one planet to the other. If you want to get to another planet, you just take off. You go through the atmosphere. You fly to another planet. You go through. It's not like you don't you don't just select it on a menu. There aren't any predetermined points to the planet you have to go to. You just go to another planet, like in No Man's Sky. So, and there's mining and there's cool creatures to find. There's all the stuff that I liked about No Man's Sky but with an overarching story that actually leads you to do things that are important and make you want to do things like in No Man's Sky which is like I don't really care about doing anything because it's not help it's, it's there's nothing le it doesn't lead to anything in No Man's Sky in this one it leads to something there's a big overarching story which I really like it's like a perfect it's like a better No Man's Sky for me number three the graphics the graphics actually look really good even on the switch I was impressed and it's not even really like the technical level of detail is just like mind-blowing it's just that the art style is really nice there's a great use of color everything really stands out i like the grass and it kind of like blows in the the wind that you make from your 
your start your aircraft um, and just the enemies models seem really detailed uh, I like how on the switch it seems that they're kind of instead of taking out a lot of features now there may be some graphical features that are taken out I haven't seen direct comparison but I've seen kind of one game and look at the other game it seems more like they're just take drawing taking that that draw bit distance back and lowering the resolution a bit uh, it still seems like you're getting all of the bells and whistles of course I'm gonna have to wait for somebody like Digital Foundry to you know get a direct comparison there for exactly what's different um, but I mean the game looks good and I think the art style is the biggest con biggest point here because the the use of color is just absolutely incredible it looks everything really pops it looks really really good number four is something that I'm not entirely sure how it works but I heard them talking about it during the treehouse when they were showing off the game and it's this sort of advanced UI or advanced AI excuse me that they have in the game so apparently when you're playing the game there are giant monsters that can uh, kind of build bases and recruit other monsters and kind of, you know, keep, uh, you know, make little monster babies that grow up into big monsters, you know, expand the amount of monsters that are on a certain planet, and if you go away from a planet, it's still, like, the AI is still moving around, still creating bases, still multiplying the amount of enemies that are there, and when you come back, the world might be as like a lot different than when you were there. It might have been like a smaller enemy counter. There might have been less bases where the enemies are strongholding inside. And now I haven't seen exactly how this works. They haven't really gone into depth exactly how this works. But they said something is some kind of advanced AI that allows them to do this. And I just thought that was really interesting. The fact that you know. In real life, if you were on a different planet, that other planet's still it's still moving, it's still shaking. You, if you didn't, you know, annihilate the entire planet, they're they're gonna reproduce, they're gonna build bases, they're gonna try to get stronger, so the next time you get there, they can try to stop you. I mean, that's just how it would work. So it's really cool that they're kind of incorporating that into this game. But as I said, I don't know exactly how it works. I don't know if it's gonna really be all that cool. Uh, we'll have to wait for the full game to come out to see. But it has me excited. And number five is. The actual Starlink story, because a lot of people are like, oh, the Star Fox missions, that's what I'm in, that's what I'm for, I'm for the Star Fox story, that's it. But, I actually saw a few cutscenes from the actual, just normal Starlink story, and as I said, I don't know the overarching story, but I've seen different clips here and there, and it actually, the way it's, the way it's presented is really well done. It's extremely cinematic, almost like you're watching a, a pretty high-budget movie in a lot of these cutscenes, and the characters were really interesting. Uh, it was really epic, the scenarios, like one time uh, there was a ship and it crashed into their like bigger ship when everyone was out fighting the enemies around and it just took their like commander dude and just like escaped. Like he was just like sh just slammed right into there, created a hole and they all got out and like stole stuff and left. And I was like, oh that's so cool. It was just like they're just beating the crap out of everything. And it, the voice acting was great, the characters were interesting, um, the graphics in the cutscenes are exquisite. They, I've never seen such high quality models on like Star Fox, because when you get to see the Star Fox cutscenes, because they're integrated into the actual story, but they're, they also have their own story. It's very interesting the way they do it, it's very well integrated. So even though you see the Starlink story, like Star Fox characters are still there. So, like, their models are really good, but the other models for the other characters are good. You can see, like, individual strands of hair, and it's, like, very well detailed, and the characters are interesting. The voice acting's great. The cutscenes are pretty epic. So, I'm I'm thinking that this could be actually a really good story in here. Um, I'm just wanting to kind of... I'm, I'm waiting, holding off. I don't want to see too much about what the actual story is, but from the quality of the cutscenes that I've seen, I'm excited to get in and see, because it seems like whatever the story is, it's very well presented, which is obviously really good. But yeah, guys, that's my five reasons why I'm pretty dang hyped for Starlink on the Nintendo Switch. It's a lot of cool things. Obviously, the Switch version is definitely the one I'm getting. Usually, when third-party games come on to the Switch, I usually get the PC version because my PC is a beast and it will run at 1440p 60fps ultra settings and it will look amazing. But that extra Star Fox content, that extra Star Fox missions, I think I'm going to have to get it on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, at least to play the Star Fox missions. Maybe I'll buy it again on the PC if I really enjoy it uh, and, and, and uh, play it again there in, in the ultra settings and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, graphics aren't everything. Sometimes, you know, they add all these kind of cool content and it makes me want to buy it on the Switch. 
Uh, but yeah, thank you guys all for watching. If you enjoyed this, let me know down in the comments below. Also, let me know what you think of Starlink Battle for Atlas down in the comments below. Do you like it? Are you hyped? Is there something about it that you've seen that you're kind of like, eh, I don't know about all of that. I don't know if it's really going to work. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below. And subscribe for more videos Tuesdays, Thursdays. And I'm going to try to do them Saturdays now as well. We'll see how many I get out then. Uh, gaming live streams Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And Cup Talk Monday through Friday where I chat with all you guys about the latest Nintendo news. Anyways, I'll see all you dudes later on. What about Nintendo? Bye! Thank you.